every once in a while, you get important reminders from those that have either been in the wrestling business in the past for years or decades or currently in the wrestling business and have been for years or decades that just because they are involved in or in the business doesn't mean they have a fucking clue whatsoever. And you know, over the years, I've talked about this time after time after time. The dumbest people when it comes to professional wrestling now are the marks in the business. And man, oh man, did Tommy Dreamer give us a perfect whopper of an example of this this past week. This is really bad. <laughs> like horrendously bad take. In talking about Cesaro, I'm going to try my best to quote him here and what he said. He said, and I quote, If I'm running the WWE, because of all the languages he speaks, I could make him the face of my company. No matter where he is on the card, you're going to get a top-rated, top-notch wrestling match. Unquote. Because yes, automatically, in today's hardcore Mark world, the moves in the matches are the only fucking thing that matters, and that's why wrestling's not as popular as it used to be. Who wants to see characters and personalities and stories with all types of interesting plot twists and turns that get you emotionally invested and engaged. No, just don't want to do the lazy shit and, and focus on the matches. Like, this is, this is ridiculous. Like, and in reference to Cesaro and this being his first, like, world championship opportunity, um, this is what Dreamer said about Cesaro possibly being able to guy. Uh, he says, and I quote again, he will be the guy, and I'll tell you why. Because I know we're wrestling fans, and it's like, how come they haven't given this guy the ball in forever? I know he had a lot of positive talk when Vince McMahon had said on one of the shareholder meetings that he said he doesn't feel Cesaro doesn't connect with the people. Maybe because of the way he speaks. How was like the first, are you kidding me? This guy has it. And I feel he will get that Daniel Bryan reaction if they ever decide to fully pull the trigger with him. Just because fans love him. You think about why they love him, it's because of his in-ring work. He's the quarterback that always delivers. He's the baseball player that always delivers for you when you need him in the clutch. But if you need someone to bunt, you bunt. Unquote. Now look. I think it is very fair to say about me over the years that I've been somewhat of a proponent of Cesaro. I'm a fan of Cesaro, going back to his Kings of Wrestling tag team days. Uh, I like what Cesaro represents. Like, this is a dude that I could take somewhat seriously in the ring. He brings a little bit of size, which is above the norm in today's wrestling business. He brings power and he wrestles in a way that I appreciate that every time I see him, I feel like he is trying to make the most out of his time. I respect the hell out of that. I love the ring work. I do too. Because again, it feels more legit. It feels realer than the typical flippy, floppy, fucky, spot monkey bullshit that we see throughout all of professional wrestling. I legitimately like Cesaro. And I'm also an advocate for not everybody needs to talk. In some cases, that is okay. Everybody should be different. Everybody should be unique. If everybody has the exact same personality and if everybody could talk the exact same way, like that's every bit as bad damn near as if nobody could talk at all, which is mostly what you've got now. But to sit there and look at Cesaro and think that you would make him the face of your company? You know, Tommy Dreamer, that's why you're largely doing Bush League bullshit now because of stuff like that. That's ignorant. Because he can speak multiple languages, that's why you would make him the face of the company? Who gives a shit? I don't give a shit if a guy could speak one language or 20. If he's got that level of charisma and speaking skills, you know, mic skills. He's got the character, he's got the story, he's got all the other skills. Like, who gives a fuck what language he speaks? Could you imagine saying, hey, I would make Cesaro the top guy in WWE over The Rock because Cesaro speaks more languages. Like, how stupid does that sound? If you wanted to say, hey, I want to focus on making a Cesaro a bigger deal, 
because I think he could potentially play a little bit better on an international scale, especially when you go back eventually to do an international trips. I agree. Like that makes some sound logical business sense. And especially when you look at some of these guys over the years, like Bret Hart, you know, Davey Boy Smith back in the day, those were huge international stars. I would argue bigger international overseas stars than they were here in the States. Because that type of wrestling appealed to that demographic. And a Cesaro could bring some of those similar elements. So I don't have a problem with him getting pushed. I really don't. You know, I would much rather see a Cesaro than half of the jag bags on the fucking roster today. Probably way more than that. Closer to 80-90%. But I'm sorry, dude. Just because he can speak several languages in real life doesn't mean that he can speak a damn damn one of them when it comes to cutting a goddamn promo interview. The hell's wrong with you? If you want to make somebody the top guy of your company, they better be believable, they better be somebody that the audience can connect with, and in today's era, they better be able to fucking talk. That in-ring shit is irrelevant if they can do these other things. Or in spite of their lack of in-ring skills. And they can do this other shit. Like it comes down to this whole notion of what matters more. Who's the better worker? To me, the better worker is the guy that draws the most money. Because that's what the fuck the wrestling business is about. People got into wrestling and started taking their moves and matches too fucking seriously. I understand you might take your craft seriously. And you might have pride in what you do. That's fantastic and wonderful. If you're sitting there going around doing all these moves and beating your brains in for 30 minutes and nobody watches and nobody cares, then how the fuck good are you at your job? Meanwhile, you could go out there and do 10 minutes of punches and poses and if the people are popping, as they buy into your character, you've connected with them, they're bought into the story, then that's what fucking matters. Hell no, Cesaro ain't a top dude. Anybody that would look at Cesaro and say, I'm going to build my entire international wrestling company around him is a moron and in no way, shape or form deserves to be seriously treated as a credible wrestling voice anymore. And to sit there and make the comparison about like Daniel Bryan, no, 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 no. Daniel Bryan, even when he came to WWE had a much bigger, more loyal following than a Cesaro does. Sure, there's some commonality and there's some crossover, but like Daniel Bryan is a whole different level of thing. And the way that that Daniel Bryan story was positioned in 2013 leading into 2014, like there is nothing that Cesaro has that is nearly as interesting or compelling as hot, as connected to the audience as what Daniel Bryan had at that time. And to say otherwise is just fucking ridiculous and delusional. And even if Cesaro had all the fans there right now. I guarantee you they're not getting behind him to the same level that Daniel Bryan did in 13 or 14. There is no fucking way. Because at that time, at least, Daniel Bryan had evolved. He had grown significantly as a promo. He had grown significantly as a character compared to like 2010, 2011 indie glory guy. Like, by the time Daniel Bryan was in that spot in 2013 and 2014, he became an infinitely better worker than he ever been in fucking ROH or Japan or any goddamn where else. Because he finally got it. He took that Owen Hart character turn, learned how to be different, then reincorporated those things into that babyface run. Like, hey, we know I'm not the biggest Daniel Bryan fan, but I respect the dude, but I gotta speak facts when I see him. In no way, shape, or form is he comparable. Cesaro's just not. Now, can I say, if Tommy Dreamer had said Cesaro should get a shot at the world championship, I would not disagree with that. And the reason I wouldn't is because so many unworthy people have already gotten the world title shot and world title run. What the hell difference would it make if Cesaro got it? At least you could take him a little bit seriously. Now, that's a fair statement. I could say he maybe deserves to be a world champion. Because there isn't much of a standard to it in the different companies anymore any fucking way. So what the hell does it matter? You know what I mean? But when you sit there and start talking about the top guy, like making him the face of the place, and you not only say that ridiculous thing, but then you follow it up with really ridiculous logic, like you deserve to be criticized for that. Like somebody like a Tommy Dreamer who's been in the wrestling business for three decades, like personal opinion is one thing and I'm respectful of that. But on the other hand, like... People look to you as somebody that should fucking know better. 
If this was some Johnny Kumquats on Twitter saying this dumb crap because he was a raging Cesaro, Mark, that's one thing. You could humor it and keep it moving. But when you talk about a guy like Tommy Dreamer, who has wrestled all these different promotions, he's been on national TV, he's been as some type of a star, and he's got decades of experience, and he's the type of guy that people go to in wrestling now because they want to use his knowledge and expertise. Like, this is the type of dumb shit that he's putting out there. Like, that's a problem. Guys like Tommy Dreamer should be, should be that bridge between the past to the present and future. Being able to be young enough to still be able to see where the business is and where it needs to go, but also truing back to some of the fundamentals of the business in its history and making sure the business doesn't stray too far away from them. In fact, part of the reason that wrestling is not as popular today is exactly because it strayed away from some of those fundamentals. And you're doing that when you sit there and suggest that Cesaro, could, you would be, would be arguably your top face of WWE. That's just astoundingly stupid. It just is. If you wanted to say a top guy, maybe I would humor it. If you wanted to say, hey, maybe he deserves one shot with the world strap and see what could happen. At this point, I don't see where it does a ton of harm. And even if it started to, you could quickly yank it right back off. When you're talking about like he could have a Daniel Bryan level run, when you're talking about he could be that, that dude. I didn't know ECW used to be known for drugs. I didn't realize Tommy was still doing them to that level. You're not. So stop acting like it. That's just insane. Cesaro's cool. I like Cesaro. I respect him. But I'm not staking my entire fucking company on him. And I promise you, if a lot of you were in that same spot, you'd feel the exact same way as me and you know damn good and well you would and you would in no way, shape or form agree with Tommy Dreamer.